happy birthday to you, America. Today is the 4th of July, and today I thought it would make the, uh, I thought this would be the best day to explain why the collapse of the US is inevitable. So let's start with the anthem playing in the background, why don't we? So first of all, let's look at the US debt. 17 trillion dollars, 581 billion, 805 million, and then after that, the numbers just keep growing. And then of course, unfunded liabilities, almost 123 trillion dollars. That's incredible. And then of course, the, uh, the GDP is, wow. It's not even 17 trillion like it once was. It's now uh, 16 trillion. Good. Incredible. I'll just keep restarting it uh, once it runs out. All right. Now about the interest rates. That's right, they're currently at between zero and one fourth percent. Thanks for having very low interest rates. I hope Europe has them even negative. Is the US going to become a country with negative interest rates? Only time will tell. What about the NDEA, NDAA? That's right. Meanwhile, the troubling NDAA provision first signed into law 2012, which permits the military to detain individuals indefinitely without trial, remains on the books for 2014. So, if you are an American citizen, or a citizen of any other country, the US military has the right to be able to capture you without a trial, and without informing the public you were captured. Ah, uh, but I thought this was a free country. No, oh, evidently I was wrong. Isn't that incredible? Now, what about this? Oh, did you hear? 40% of workers made less than $20,000 a year. Oh, and did you know that the poverty line for a family of four is uh, $24,000? In fact, on average, these workers earn just this much. Hmm, and that's 40%. If I use my calculator, watch, it's like uh, 318 million people. So that's, uh, let's see, that would be three Yes. Boom. One hundred and twenty seven million people under the poverty line. Just about. Isn't that incredible? Ah, oh, this country is so great. Yes. A developed country where most people, are where many people are living under the poverty line. Not most. Oh, what's this? 1.6 billion rounds of ammo purchased by Homeland Security. Hmm. No, I know what you guys are going to say. Oh, it's for target practice. We should not worry. Hmm. And why are they hollow point rounds? And a frightening amount specialized for snipers. Hmm. Oh, and that's right. At the height of the Iraq war, the army was spending less than 6 million rounds a month. Therefore, 1.6 billion rounds would be enough to sustain a hot war for 20 plus years. Oh, and now... And the, the DHS is showing off its acquisition of heavily armored personal carriers. Repriated from the Iraqi and Afghani theaters of operation. Mm. Yes. 
I wonder why they are doing that. I know, it's to protect your rights and your liberty. Certainly, of course. I'm, I'm sure that's the pretext they are going to use. What's this? Oh, drones! What? By the end of the year to test how to best integrate drones into the national airspace by 2015. I wonder why they are installing drones in American soil. Um, in American airspace, I should say. I wonder why. Certainly it's to protect the citizens, right? No, oh, and by 2020 they expect to have 30,000 drones. Hmm, I wonder why. Oh, of course, it's to benefit the people, certainly. Oh, and what? In 2014, the first quarter, it shrank by 2.9%, it being the economy. Hmm, yes, the economy certainly is improving. Ah, oh, isn't that great? Oh, what about this? Oh, that's right. Tens of thousands of illegal aliens are being transported across the country to stay at facilities for unspecified periods of time at the taxpayer's expense. <laughs> oh, and two-thirds of them were adults with children. Oh, and one-third are unaccompanied minors. Oh. So, yes, your tax dollars are going to benefit these foreigners. Isn't that great? Oh, but I know, I know. Shell gas is going to save the economy, right? Because there's so much shell gas, there's an abundance of it. 1,000 trillion metric tons, I believe. Where is that number? Oh, 1,000 trillion cubic tons recoverable in North America alone. Oh, yes, of course, except, uh, well, what, what, are, what are the, uh, cons to this. Well, first of all, it's 5,000 feet on the ground, so almost a mile under the ground, and I believe that's at sea level. So, oh, and then of course, in order to obtain the natural gas from the shell, you have to use fracking, which involves, you know, using water. Pumping hydraulic fracturing fluids and water, which could contain hazardous chemicals into the ground along with water and sand and high pressures. The result is a super salty brine, prone to bacterial growth and potentially contaminated with heavy metals. The National Geographic wrote in its series on national or on shale gas, I mean to say. Now oh, let's continue this anthem, should we? Of course. So you can read this article if you want. Ah, so with all of these things, it's up to you to decide whether the U.S. will collapse or not. My opinion is the land of the free and the home of the brave is going to become non-existent very soon. Hmm. So as Alex Jones always says, the answer to 1984 is 1776. We'll see if a revolution plays out or if the people just allow Mr. Obama to stick his BBC into their anuses. Metaphorically speaking, of course, I'm done.